Microsoft's detailing how and when it's going to solve the Xbox storage problem. Ah yes, the Xbox Series X and S, able to play multiple generations of games, new, old, and upcoming titles. But one of the biggest problems, especially on the Series S, is storage. Now Microsoft has talked about external storage and how you can go out and buy a Seagate drive, plug it in the back, get native, or I should say relatively internal type like performance with the storage. But one of the problems is those cards aren't cheap, sometimes costing $200 or more, depending on when you're buying it and where you bought it and how you bought it. But there are other ways that Microsoft is able to solve these storage problems. And at Gamescom this week, they are detailing how, and more importantly, when they are going to unveil that. Now, we've already known about this because Microsoft said, hey, if you have an Xbox One, you'll be able to play Flight Sim via the cloud. Now, the big question has been, when is cloud streaming going to be coming to the consoles that we all play today? And Microsoft is saying, well, they're coming this holiday. And thankfully, that's not too far out. Actually, they're going to start testing it this fall. And they've shared a couple assets that are going to kind of show you what it's going to look like here. So here's the basic idea is that Microsoft is going to enable cloud gaming available on your Xbox console. It's something we all knew was coming, but Microsoft had been kind of muddying about the details. And now we have some more definitive facts and them saying that you can do, you can play over 100 high quality games in Xbox Game Pass library without having to use up valuable storage or wait for installs. That's wait for installs will become apparent here about why this is so important because you will be able to quickly jump into the fun with your friends and multiplayer games according to Microsoft. Like as soon as you get the invite you just hold down your little Xbox button and you will jump into the game instantly. I think that's a really cool and differentiating feature that you're not going to be able to see replicated easier on other platform so the idea is that look at any of these titles i have here you have or you have dungeons uh you have Sea of Thieves, you have Destiny 2, you have Forza. Imagine you just click on that, you wait for that little loading screen that shows up when you play a cloud streaming title, and then, well, you know, 10 to 20 seconds later, you're in and playing. And it might even be faster on these next-gen consoles from what I've been hearing about Microsoft's optimizations coming to the consoles, but no official word on that. That is just things that I am hearing. So it might even be a little bit faster, but for now, just know that it's not gonna take you too long to get into cloud gaming titles. The reason why this is so important is that these titles are getting larger and harder to play when you want to have multiple multiple titles downloaded. You can basically have like one and a half Call of Duties these days and then every other game is just like, okay, maybe you can install it. But with cloud gaming, especially these first person titles, or, or I should say like first player experiences, especially like Ori or Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, sea of Thieves also actually plays pretty well. Forza, I'm a little bit on the fence about recommending that, or even Destiny, potentially maybe playing Destiny solo experience might be okay. Uh, but definitely more like platformers, it's gonna be very easy to use the service and get a high quality experience. The question that is still outstanding is how qu high quality of an experience is it? Because do you get a pretty wide differentiation about how it plays when you use a wired controller on a PC versus using a wireless controller on your phone? The deviation there in the experience does differ quite a bit, but I'm optimistic that when you're playing it on the console, it's going to be playing pretty smoothly. Now, this is what it's going to look like when you actually go into a title. You simply just click play or you will have the option to install, but I could highly recommend that Minecraft Dungeons, you just hit play and just go and enjoy it and don't even worry about it and i think this is going to be a huge win for gamers who just want to pop in and out of titles and especially try them because having the option to always be able to install them is great because we all know that you will get the best experience through an install but a lot of times you just don't want to wait for it to download because what if the whole game downloads and it takes you a while especially with a slower connection and you don't like it which is pretty hot something happens pretty often to me where you just try a game, it's not for me, and you delete it. Well, being able to sample the game via cloud gaming is going to be a really easy and fast and convenient way to uh, to get access to things like this. Now, there are a couple caveats that are going to be coming with this that you should be aware about, that you're not going to be getting 4K streams. Microsoft is very clearly saying that they will support up to 1080p and at 60 frames per second, just like you experience on PCs, phones, and tablets today. Little disappointing if you're on a, a Series X and you're not going to be able to get 4K, but at the same point, you'll also be able to download it and probably get this higher resolution. You should have a little bit more storage in theory because the, the Series X comes with more storage available than the Series S. But at the same time, a lot of games just don't need 4K. I think Minecraft Dungeons is actually one of those. Ori probably doesn't need it either. But again, if you want to download it, you have that option. The cool thing is, is that you don't have to download it. And the even better thing is, is that if you have friends playing a game like Sea of Thieves and you don't have it installed, you can just pop in and 
and get playing really, really quickly and then maybe let the game download overnight and then go play the next day with it installed locally if you want to keep it there. It's a really cool usage. It's a really cool usage of the technology and how Microsoft is sort of bridging that platform and really just sort of removing barriers to what we know gaming is today because typically you have to put a, a disc into a console or you have to wait for it to download, but that barrier is dropping. Now, granted, I will fully admit that cloud, Microsoft's cloud gaming service is not perfect, but I think this might be one of the optimal scenarios for the platform, really being able to broaden the horizons of what games you wanna play without having to wait. You can just go jump in, play it, and give it a shot. I mean, for example, I just completed 12 minutes. I think 12 minutes might actually be like a perfect title for cloud gaming. Just, I don't I don't want to give away any spoilers for it, but the mechanics of the game, I think we all know that it's a top-down sort of platform-ish like style puzzle at the end of the day, um, would be really, really well received through cloud gaming, which by the way, high-level review of 12 minutes, it's a really interesting title, very interesting game mechanics, some very frustrating points, but I mean, I completed it, so that pretty much tells you everything that you need to know. Um, at least I completed it once, and I'm not going to say any more about it because it might give things away. So, as Microsoft continues to evolve cloud gaming, this is going to be something interesting to watch because this is quite literally unlocking new experiences. Microsoft, remember, if you put out a, they put out a survey about how valuable Game Pass is because of how many titles people are playing that they would not have previously tried. Perfect example. I would not have played 12 minutes. Uh, more than likely would not have paid for that game. While it is a lot of fun, it's just not typically the type of game that I'm going to go throw money at. I would just stick to first-person shooters or things like Flight Sim. So it, I think this... And this enablement of cloud streaming is really going to unlock some more of the capabilities of the console because people are going to be willing to try new titles. And that's going to become more important for Microsoft as they continue to dump more and more content. Like Psychonauts 2 is coming out, which by the way, also, I have not played it yet, got very good reviews. Some people were saying it's better than Rift Apart, um, the new Clank game. And so... Uh, Ratchet and Clank, that is. And so it'll be really interesting to see how that shakes out in the market with people um, comparing titles. But again, Psychonauts 2, honestly, is a game I may not have bought, but I'm definitely going to be playing because it's part of Game Pass. And honestly, it might never also be a title that does well in cloud gaming once it does arrive because of the way it's operating. It's not basically a multiplayer title uh, at its core. It's more of a platformer, again, um, that typically does well on cloud gaming, which means just more and more people popping in and out of titles, which means that Microsoft's pipeline of content needs to be full and robust, which is why they're launching so many titles, I believe, what is six games in six months, and it's going to really be starting to pay dividends for Microsoft here. So super interesting stuff. Now, the only unfortunate thing here is that we're not going to get full access to this, and by full access, I mean everybody getting access to this, until later this year, around the holiday, holiday timeline, is when Microsoft is officially saying. I'll be super curious to see if Halo Infinite lands in the cloud gaming bucket. Not sure that it will, although Master Chief Collection's in there, so maybe it's there. But as we all know, there's a couple delays already with Halo Infinite. And I don't know if they would try to do any optimizations once it gets into cloud gaming or anything like that. And so it might be a little early. But that'll be an interesting point to watch. Does Halo Infinite arrive or not? Because you can, in theory, start playing it via cloud gaming, and so there you go. Interesting stuff. I find this stuff super fascinating about how Microsoft is able to unlock experiences like this through a cloud gaming experience. I mean, this is this is sort of the, the end, I don't wanna say the end point, but sort of the realization of why cloud gaming is so powerful. Yes, I know a lot of people, myself included, love to play it on mobile or love to play it in the browser, but I think sampling games, almost like snacking on games, is gonna be a much, much more utilized experience I really do, than potentially even on a mobile device. Reason being, I'm a perfect example. I sit down on the couch, play a bunch of different games through cloud gaming, try them or do what else. Getting someone to play the games on a mobile, Microsoft has to jump through many more hurdles. There's gonna be a lot more people who have access to cloud gaming early on with this experience and it's just going to show up you're just going to hit play and i bet there's a i bet there's a sizable portion of the audience who start using cloud gaming and they probably don't even realize it and that would be a huge win for microsoft they might notice because of the, the loading screens a little bit different but the fact that they can jump in instantly more importantly folks this is where i think microsoft might be headed to this imagine on christmas right you unbox your console and you don't want to have to sit there and download a game because it's 30 gigs, it's 100 gigs, depending on how big it is. If cloud gaming is up and running by Christmas, which I suspect it will be, you'll be able to instantly start playing games on Christmas and not waiting for updates and not waiting for everything else. I think that is a serious differentiator for Microsoft. And if you want a differentiation in your content, make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.